This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hey everybody, welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. Hope you have had a great week. Apologies for missing last week's multiverse. I actually came down with a really, really bad stomach flu, but everything's good, I'm okay, and we are back on schedule. So, uh, some breaking news hit just recently that our galaxy's black hole suddenly flashed this really bright light. It's been all over the news, scientists have no idea what's going on, so obviously, that would be a good topic for multiverse. That's what we're going to be talking about today. If you haven't had a chance to already, make sure you subscribe to this channel, click the bell for notifications, and in case YouTube doesn't notify you, every Thursday morning at 9 a.m., unless I come down with a stomach flu, you will get a new episode of Into the Multiverse. Um, so astronomers spotted something that they call unprecedented while observing the uh, our, our closest supermassive black hole to Earth. Uh, and this happened this spring. It was an eruption and a massive burst of infrared radiations. Uh, scientists can't say definitively what caused this flash. It's very strange. So this black hole, it's known as Sagittarius A, uh, and it's situated in the middle of the Milky Way. It's about 26,000 light years from Earth, and that's according to NASA. Uh, scientists observing this black hole for four days in April and in May uh, of this year using the Keck 2 telescope in Hawaii uh, saw this event. Now, it's been known to be uh, highly variable for years, but the new observations uh, reached much brighter flux levels in 2019 than ever measured uh, at that black hole before. But keep in mind, we haven't really been able to measure this black hole for a very long time. Uh, I think maybe 10 or 20 years, something like that. It hasn't been that long. So this might not be totally unprecedented. It might be something that just happens every uh, couple of decades. But, uh, but still... There was a study that was accepted to the journal Astrophysical Journal Letters uh, that reported on this, and the distribution of flux variations from the four nights are also described as very unusual. But again, it's, it's compared to a, a, a very small set of observations that they already had. Um, now... Tuan Du, who's an astronomer at UCLA, who uh, tweeted that he's been observing the black hole for years, um, tweeted about this, this event last Saturday. So he said, quote, the black hole is always variable, but this was the brightest we've seen in the infrared so far. Uh, it was probably even brighter before we started observing that night, end quote. So in this study, the authors explained that the new measurements pushed the limits of the current statistical models, uh, and they uh, may need to be revised to gain a better understanding of the probability of, of, of observing very high flux levels. And we've talked about statistical models and uh, scientific computer models on this show before. You can only really take them so far, because you can only input the information that you have. Uh, and we haven't been observing this stuff for all that long. So when something like this happens, happens, it might not be as crazy as uh, the mainstream media would have you believe. <laughs> because, you know, they, they have to get clicks, they have to get people on their website, so they're going to, in the headline, they're going to make it sound a lot more outlandish than what it is. Uh, but it's still, it, it's still interesting. The scientists haven't determined exactly why this flash occurred, uh, but Dew told um, Science Alert that he had a couple of working theories. So the flash could have been caused by another star passing close by and then changing the way that the gas flows into the black hole. Uh, and another possibility is that the flash occurred due to a ga uh, gas cloud, which also recently passed close to the black hole in 2014, uh, and it could be a delayed reaction to that event. Now, according to Dew, there are other telescopes that have been observing the, uh, th this black hole over the summer, and he is uh, eagerly awaiting the results. Uh, and he wrote that in a tweet. But, uh, you know, maybe then, with a little bit more data, astronomers will have a better idea of what happened to the black hole with about four million times the mass of the sun. Uh, so, of course, we'll keep up on that story as it develops here on Into the Multiverse, as we always do. But, you know, this... Uh, this whole question of black holes, they are very mysterious. There's something even more mysterious than a black hole. As far as, uh, as, far as we know, it hasn't been proven yet, but this is a, a hypothetical opposite of a black hole called a white hole. This would be something that pushes things uh, out rather than uh, brings them in. And this has been a question for a while. So, you know, we know about black holes, that these, uh, they, they, they bring in everything, uh, including light, even time, uh, to their center, anything that gets too close. 
Um, well, it's been theorized that the opposite might exist. We've talked about this before on Multiverse, but it has been quite some time. That was, I think, one of our one of the first episodes that we that we did. When, uh, I think the first time we ever even talked about black holes on this show, we talked about the possibility of white holes. Uh, so, for those who have missed that, because obviously our audience has grown quite a bit since then, uh, praise God. But um, for for those who have missed that, this this idea of a white hole, it's literally the complete opposite from a black hole. It, it would emit matter and energy uh, into space, but nothing could enter it. it. It's even been hypothesized that maybe a white hole is where the black hole leads. You know, if the, if the black hole is a tunnel to someplace, uh, the other end would be a white hole. Now, it's appearing um, that, you know, the universe seems to work in, in binaries. Uh, so, you know, if there's a black hole, there's a white hole. Uh, if, if, there's, uh, if there's a void, there's a non-void, you know, that kind of thing. So there's been a question for a long time, where do things go when they enter a black hole? Uh, and that, that's where the white hole question comes in. Now, unfortunately, whether or not white holes truly exist, that remains an open question. But it hasn't stopped researchers from thinking about what, they'd, uh, what these things would be like if they do exist. So some theories suggest they might even be necessary to solve some longstanding problems, from the nature of dark matter to the nature of the universe itself. This could be a candidate for dark, dark matter if something like this were to exist. Um, so white holes would trace their origins back to Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. So some solutions of uh, the, the theory's equations produce black holes, and it turns out other solutions actually do produce white holes. You can find them in the mathematics. So the two are mathematically, only mathematically today, but they're mathematically equally, equally likely to exist. So... We know black holes exist. We've been able to measure them. Uh, so a white hole is just as probable as a black hole. So there's good reason to believe these things are actually out there. Uh, now, black holes and white holes are as intertwined as the names would suggest. The NASA astrophysicists have referred to, uh, to, the, to, to white holes as the time inverse of black holes. So basically, if you reverse the film footage of a black hole, then you would get a white hole. That's, that's what it would look like. Um, so some interpretations, they're, they're pretty literal about this. They say that white holes may simply be the opposite end of black holes, connected by theoretical tunnels of space-time that are called wormholes. We've talked about that quite often on this show as well. So the matter and energy falling into a black hole would eventually beam out of a white hole uh, somewhere either in this or possibly even a parallel uh, universe. Uh, but the crushing gravity of this would surely uh, ensure that only a, uh, a mangled and broken down version of whatever you put in the black hole would make it out of the uh, white hole, if anything at all. I mean, it, it, would, it would be torn apart on a, uh, on a, a particular level. Um, but that's if, that's if they're not stabilized. There's another theory about black holes that the, the spin of the black hole might possibly stabilize it, meaning uh, the gravity wouldn't be as intense. It's similar to how, you know, the Earth is pulling the moon towards itself, but the moon doesn't crash into the Earth because the moon is spinning around the Earth. So after a while, the centrifugal force and the gravity, they reach equilibrium. It's the same kind of idea with a black hole. It might be that some black holes, or all black holes for all we know, uh, have such an intense spin that it counteracts the gravity, meaning you possibly could pass through a black hole. Uh, and the same could be true of a white hole. None of this is proven, uh, but there, there are theories about that. Um, now, current thinking says that black holes emit radiation and they slowly evaporate. So they get smaller and smaller until they basically just kind of fade out of existence. But now it seems that there are uh, certain conceptions of the universe that say that might actually be impossible. You know, just as light and matter are, are, are quantized, you know, they're, they're, made, they're made of pieces, uh, they come in discrete bundles of packets that can't be divided. So, you know, particles, a particle of light is our photons. Uh, but so too uh, might space-time itself come in these discrete chunks. And if that's true, then a black hole could only shrink until hitting that natural limit. 
Uh, so we've talked about the Planck length on here before. It's the, it's the smallest length possible uh, in regular three-dimensional space. Uh, time has a limit as well, which is the Planck time. So if that's true, then a black hole would only be able to shrink until hitting that limit. Uh, and that's when it would be rebound outward in what's called a quantum bounce. Uh, it, it turns this shrinking black hole into an expanding white hole. That's the idea. Uh, and apparently, the math on that checks out that that could actually be possible. It could solve a number of other problems uh, in physics. Uh, there's something called the black hole information paradox that would be resolved if white holes exist. Uh, but, you know, put simply, this, this paradox says that if th the information entering a black hole would disappear completely along with the death of a black hole as it evaporated into nothing, but information is supposed to be uh, inviolate, meaning you can't get rid of it, you can't totally destroy it, uh, it can never be completely undone. So these quantum bounces would solve that problem uh, if they exist. All the information stored within the black hole would simply be spewed out when, when it becomes a white hole. And white holes also might help explain the identity of dark matter, uh, another reoccurring uh, problem in, in, in physics. The, the problem here is that something is holding together parts of the universe, even though nothing is visibly doing so. We can't see what it is. And because of that, we just call it... Uh, we, we just call it dark matter. We can't see it. It's dark. Um, so the current explanation says that invisible stuff, this, this invisible dark matter, it, it's a mysterious substance that doesn't react with light or any other known force of nature except for gravity. It seems to interact with gravity, but that's it. Uh, no one knows exactly what dark matter might be, uh, though it does seem to make up about 84% of all the matter in the universe. Uh, but a 2018 paper, uh, paper suggested that white holes, which are, it would be extremely difficult to detect, uh, and made up of a mysterious kind of matter, might just make up that difference, might make up that 84%, uh, percent, uh, or at least a large portion of that, uh, all of this dark matter. So um, th there's one final interpretation of white holes that uh, physicists are looking at right now. Uh, and they are starting to think of you know, what they call the Big Bang as, a, as the ultimate white hole. So it, it's, it, you know, with the Big Bang idea, they've, they've tried using theories about uh, black holes to sum this up, and it, it, that's fizzled out. And I think we're going to see the same thing if they continue on that line with white holes. Now, you might be able to say, you know, the, the Big Bang, the creation, uh, is like a white hole in that something is expanding out and emitting everything throughout the universe. But what they say about the, the, the Big Bang is that that's literally where time and space, even space, originated. So, meaning you could not point to a place in the universe where the, 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 the Big Bang started because it would be literally everywhere, because everywhere was a, just a small point uh, during that time. And same with time, there, there would be no before the Big Bang or what caused the Big Bang, but they use this to get around the causation uh, problem. Something must have caused the Big Bang, if the Big Bang was really how the universe came in to be, you know, even if God himself was the one that initiated it, something had to cause it, yet all of their models show nothing caused it. So there, there's, there's a problem there. So I, I suspect probably uh, using the, the mysterious white holes um, explanation is just another way uh, for them to get around that. Ultimately, it all comes back to infinity. You can't have infinity in physical reality, and the Big Bang keeps bringing them there over and over and over again, even in the mathematics. Uh, even Carl Gauss said that, uh, famous mathematician, he even said that he protests against the use of infinity in mathematics. Reason being, if you're trying to solve a mathematical equation and your answer is an infinity, you've done something wrong. You know, that's, that's just a, a, a standard rule in mathematics. So, uh, so they're going to have to keep uh, looking into white holes. They might exist. They probably do, do not provide an answer to their Big Bang question, um, but they, they might exist nonetheless, and that would be interesting. We're going to keep on this story as uh, details develop, of course. And uh, yeah, again, if you haven't had a chance, make sure you subscribe to this channel. YouTube probably won't notify you when a new episode goes up. So if it doesn't, 
Uh, just know that every Thursday morning, usually, uh, it, it, we're, we're pretty consistent about that, every Thursday morning, uh, you will get a new episode of Into the Multiverse, 9 a.m. Central. All right, everybody, make sure you subscribe, click the bell. Thank you so much for joining me, and until next time, let me know what you think. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. What do you think white holes are? Do you think they're real? What about black holes? Love to know what you think. All right, have a great day. Till next time, take care and God bless. When did the government alien programs originate and why? Who were the Collins elite and were they exposing the dangers of such programs? What exactly did these black projects involve? Learn the astonishing answers to those questions and so much more. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Higher Entities Ultra Collection. This special offer includes the new Fall Brothers feature film, Higher Entities, The Lost Tapes, which is a live action documentary including up close and personal discussions with former FBI agents, Department of Defense consultants, best-selling authors, and seasoned research professionals that deliver intimate testimonies of disclosure, which put you face to face on location and in the conversation, featuring Justin Fall, Dr. Thomas Horn, Ray Boucher, Derek Gilbert, Stan Dale, Darren Geisinger, Chad Riley, and Wes Fall. But that's not all. You'll also receive the top secret five volume DVD collection, Project Stargate. This unprecedented series of never before released confidential interviews features 12 of the world's leading authorities on UFOs, so called aliens, gods, and the coming day of contact. You'll be amazed as we go behind the scenes to ask experts what they really believe is coming. Watch as men with security clearances like the late Dr. Chuck Missler share for the first time what they know. Then take notes as Dr. Michael Heiser, the late Chris Putnam, Russ Dizdar, Joe Jordan, L.A. Marzulli, Daryl Sims, Gary Stearman, Joyce Ahrens and others as they weigh in on what will soon cause the world to stand still in awe. Project Stargate holds a retail value all by itself of $150, included now for a limited time in the Higher Entities Ultra Collection. Sold separately, this Ultra Collection holds a retail value of $175, yours now for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. So take advantage of this incredible offer now and receive all five Project Stargate DVDs along with the new Higher Entities documentary for your donation of only $35 plus shipping and handling. Now at the Skywatch TV store, order the Higher Entities Ultra Collection online or call 1-844-750-4985.